Lung cancer is one of many different kinds of cancers that have been transformed by immunotherapy. And it's difficult now to open up a newspaper or, or turn on the television without an advertisement or some story that sounds miraculous about immunotherapy. It's true that for a subset of patients, immunotherapy has been remarkable. It has the potential to leverage your own immune system to better recognize and attack the cancer. This can be with few or no side effects, and it can last for a long time, so long that we really don't know what's possible because these agents have only been available in the clinic for a few years, and there are patients who are still doing well two and three and four and more years, and we just don't know entirely what's possible. But that's great. Uh, we're still learning that. That history is being written. Now, these immunotherapies, what we use in lung cancer, are called checkpoint inhibitors, generally. Now, that means that uh, basically the immune system, like a lot of complex systems of the body, has several uh, switches that kind of activate it and several that uh, inhibit it because we want a balance. You don't want your immune system to be so passive that it's letting infections or cancer run amok. Uh, but at the same time, you can't have your immune system on such high vigilance that it's attacking normal cells of your body. Of course, that can happen as a disease. Autoimmune diseases, uh, are, there are many that, that are a major challenge for people because their own immune system is so hypersensitive that it's attacking your own cells. So that's why there's a balance that the body has set up to try to maintain vigilance when you need it, but not get so rabid that it's going after cells that you need to have in your body and not have attacked. The uh, cancer can uh, put out proteins that can uh, work as an inhibitory signal to the immune system and kind of placate it. And so these checkpoint inhibitors block one of these proteins. Uh, it can be one called PD-1, which is uh, on one side of the, uh, on the uh, side of the T cells that are on the immune system, or it can be one called PD-L1, which is actually on the tumor side, but they work together. So it's two sides of the same interaction. And they're IV medicines that when you block this interaction, can turn off a brake, a parking brake, for instance, and it, it basically leads the immune system to be more stimulated, more vigilant, and ideally to recognize and attack the cancer. In the best cases, this can lead to tumor shrinkage within weeks that can be very significant, and some patients, in fact, most have few or no side effects, some fatigue maybe, some rash, and they can be very uh, well tolerated and go for years even with them. Uh, the other possibility though is certainly you can have more significant toxicities and about 20 percent of patients will need to stop these treatments because of side effects at some point. These are basically immune mediated. The immune system may attack your glands like your thyroid or your adrenal or uh, it can uh, uh, inflame your lungs, your liver, your kidneys. These are potentially serious. Most of the time that can be treated by stopping the medicine or giving uh, steroids which uh, dampen the immune system. So these therapies are generally well tolerated but can have some serious side effects. But it's important to know that while some patients can have great results, that's not what we typically see for most patients. I would say about 20%, at most 25% of our patients will have a very gratifying response to immune therapies. And that means that the majority do not. They may have a little bit of a benefit, many will get none. 